Hey everybody, today we're going to be making some fun autumn um, table place cards. And um, I just loved having that, just that little bit of cre creativity on your table will just really thrill your guests. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is create this little pocket that we will be sliding in our hand painted leaf inside. So everything's gonna be painted, everything's gonna be beautiful, but first we have to get our watercolor paper ready. So I have this piece of watercolor paper. I'm using 140 pound, and this one is four and a half by six and a half. And I took the little flap right here that I'm gonna flip over is an inch and three quarters. And as you can see, I put a line here. And then after I put the line there, I'm trying to save time, that's why I went ahead and do this. I did this ahead of time. I'll take a ruler and I will score it. And there's several things you can use as a score tool. I just happened to find this really cool wedge on the edge of this paintbrush. So that's what I use. And I just press really hard, go along the ruler, and now it's easier for me to fold it in half. And once I've folded it down like this, I'll put, um, I'll get some tacky glue and just run it along the insides here and here and uh, press it down with some close pins or something until, um, and then when it dries is when I actually want to start working on it, which is this piece right here. So um, first things first, we're going to wet this whole thing down. And uh, I'm not going to use a big ginormous paintbrush for this because this is a little project. So I'm just going to wet everything down. Make sure I get everything. And once it's all been wet down, I will mix up a mixture. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and take some yellow ochre. Get rid of this ruler. Switch this in. And I'll mix a little bit of this burnt umber color with it just to kind of tone it down. I want, I'm want i looking for just a very earthy color. And I'm going to come along the edges. Like this. And then just sort of work it in until it fades into white. Now, um, I tend to like the edges to be nice and rich and dark, so I'm going to go ahead and take those two colors again and hit it on the corners even more. There we go. And then after this dries, we can go to the next step. So I'm just going to keep working it in until it pretty much goes into the white. What I'm trying to create is just a very, almost like a burlap effect. All right. There we go, we're gonna let this dry. And actually, I'll just push it aside. And while it's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and take my leaf and the first thing I want to do is create the vein that's going inside. So I'm going to go ahead and take this color that I just used for the outside, but I'm going to water it down a lot. So it's very pale. So as you can see, it's a very pale um, color. And as I lay it down, you'll see what I mean. It's hardly a color at all. But what I'm going to do is start from the bottom, from top to bottom, do the stem, and then come all the way from point all the way to the top. And this is just gonna be my guideline, so I wanna have some veining, some detail. So, and yeah, this should be, you could, you could get really into it if you want to, and wherever these little uh, points are, you could attach it to the middle vein. But the idea is, is we just wanna get some detail. Don't worry about getting so you know, so detailed. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry really well before I move on. So I have two pieces that I need to let dry and then we'll come back and work on the detail. Okay, for our next place card, we're going to work on um, just a regular where you fold it in half and put it on the table. 
And this is kind of a good size here. It's uh, still four and a half by six and a half, but this time I scored it right down the center. And so when it sits on the table, it will be sitting on the table like this. So um, I have a Cricut machine and it cuts out these shapes for me. So um, if, you ha if you know somebody that has a Cricut machine, um, you can ask them if they would cut out a bunch of deer for you or you can always message me and I'll make a way that I can ship these out to you. Or you can just go on Google and Google images of deers, um, print it out and then trace it. Uh, on a piece of watercolor paper. Either way, we are. This is watercolor paper, and this is watercolor paper. And so we're going to create kind of a uh, overlapping where we put the deer like this, but we're going to create a really pretty soft background first. So, in order to make it easy, I'm just going to go ahead and tuck this under here, and I'm only working on this area right here. So I want to start with, and these are very easy. You can do a uh, however many guests you're going to have at your table, just do everything in um, assembly line where you're doing all the sky and then you're doing, you know, and so on and so on. So let's just go ahead. I think I'm going to use this paintbrush here. It's a, uh, a round brush and it's a number eight. So I want to start with the sky and I think I'm just going to go with something that's kind of a cold sky, which is ultramarine blue. So let me just get a little bit over here mixed up. And I'm trying to avoid as much pencil drawing as possible. So, you know, don't worry about sketching this in. So I'm just going to run it across the top and let it just sort of just fill in. If you see some white areas that didn't get it, why not just leave it? You know, I mean, you don't have to put um, it solid. It could almost just look like wispy clouds in the background. So. You know what, I'm just gonna leave that. So now that with the ground, I always like to go with something a little bit more on the purple side when I do the snow. So I'm just gonna take a tiny, tiny bit of this rose color and I'm using Artistro watercolor paints right now. So as you can see, I've made, uh, I've added a little bit of that, um, uh, I would say it was kind of a burgundy color and I mixed it with the ultramarine blue so we've got a purple color here, and now I'm just going to run it across, and the same thing, just a little skate, but leave some of the white. Don't, um, don't do it solid. This is just a soft little background. Remember, we have to put someone's name on it, so you don't want to have so much, you know, detail. Okay, so this is a great place to stop because as you can see, it's very simple and I can still get um, somebody's name written on here without it being so busy. So I'm gonna just stop here and let this dry. And while this is drying, I'm going to work on my deer. So I remember there's several ways you can do this. You can, like I said, you can just Google the image and cut it out yourself. Um, like I said, I just happen to have a Cricut machine and I absolutely love my Cricut machine. I would never ever, I don't know how I could live without it. I just absolutely love it. So um, now with the deer, um, it's, it's pretty simple. What we wanna start off with is a nice, uh, kind of a rusty brown color. Let me just put that over here. And I'm only gonna, I'm just gonna start by Filling in the deer, not the not the antlers, and just do the whole thing with one color. It's super easy on yourself. Okay. While it's wet. I am going to take um, a little burnt umber and mix it in that, which is just a darker brown. I started off with more of a rusty colored brown. I don't have the names of the colors on here, but I never like to tell you to use this and use that because I want you to be feel free to use your own imagination. So this is a staghorn, so he's going to have kind of a, a white area in here. So I don't want to, um, I want to leave this like, lighter right in here. So I'm just gonna kind of dab this burnt umber 
over a few places, leaving his tail white. And the stomach area a little white. You can always take, you know, a paper towel and take some of that off if you want, which I'm going to do right now. But I'm not, like I said, I'm not looking for per per perfection right now. There we go. I just kind of want to get this, get the job done. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. And like I said, he's just a little bit darker. We are going to use our fun paint pens by Artistro as well. Um, absolutely love those. So this is, um, I'm gonna go ahead before I let this dry and do the antlers. And the antlers we wanna do in a gray tone. So if I have burnt umber and I mix a tiny bit of ultramarine blue in it, it creates a lovely gray shade. So that's the color that I was able to make with the burnt umber. I always like to make my own grays and my own blacks. I think that they're, it's a lot more fun than just dipping it in black paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the antlers in this gray tone. And that's it. So this is a good place to stop and let this dry so that we can go over and do some um, details after that's done. But for right now, we're just gonna stop here and let it dry and move on to our next project. Okay, so our third place card that we're gonna be making is on a uh, six, it's six and a half inches here, so I went three and a quarter here to put a line here, and the other part of it was, this part right here is four, four and a half. So anyway, it makes for a nice place card, just like the other one we were working on, and I have this little pumpkin cutout. It's very simple. It almost just looks like a little oval with a couple of little bumps here. And again, you can just Google images of pumpkins and just cut out this very simple shape of a pumpkin. I'll go ahead and um, sketch where this part will go. It's just the top of it. Not a big deal. Um, again, don't, don't uh, sweat the little things. Um, what we're going to do is paint the top of this just like we did the other one. So I'm going to slip it underneath here just so that will hold it down. And this background color can be many different colors. Um, in order to just keep it, you know, uh, simple, let's see. I think what I'll do is uh, just give it, I guess I'll just give it a nice warm background. You can really pick any color you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and just skim some water on the whole thing. So I really want this to bleed. And we're gonna wet the whole thing and just keep this very, very soft. I will take a let's see, I'm just gonna take the burnt the yellow ochre. I think that would be nice. And just run it along the top. I just want it to be a soft, warm, autumn-y color. Just let it bleed and just, it'll, it'll dry very soft. Okay, so that's all you need to do for that. And we're gonna go ahead and put it aside, let that dry, and meanwhile, we're gonna work on our pumpkin. So this I'm not gonna get into a whole lot of detail. I wanna keep it very, very simple um, because we're gonna put our detail in with our paint pens. We're gonna definitely have fun with the paint pens today. So I'm just gonna take the orange, it looks like it's a cad orange color, and let's just paint the entire thing. I didn't wet the pumpkin first, I just put it right on the dry paper. Okay, now that I've got it on here, I'm gonna go ahead and put the shape of the grooves in my pumpkin just to so that it doesn't look like it's just blobbed on there. So as you can see, you can see some little lines on there. And just for fun, I'm gonna take a deeper orange color. 
because I want to do it while it's wet and holding it here by the stem and just run it along the edges and the same thing. And it'll dry very soft. Okay. And the last thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and do the stem. And I'm just going to take some sap green and mix that with a little bit of brown just to, so it's not a, a green green color. And very carefully I'm just going to dab it on where the um, stem is. Now if you don't want it to bleed into your pumpkin like mine's doing, you might want to wait till it dries, but I'm, you know, for the sake of just finishing the project um, without taking too much much time, I just went ahead and did it. So uh, we're going to let this dry, and we're going to let the other part dry. And sometimes what I like to do, so that because it tends to like buckle up, like what you're seeing here, it's after a dry, it's dry, just take a break, and I'll put it between two heavy books, and and it'll dry nice and flat. But wait till it dries before you do that and, and then um, flatten it after that. And then we'll come back and do the details. Okay, so um, this dried very quickly, the little stems that I did. So let's just go ahead and work on our leaf right now. So I'm going to take... Um, I'm going to take this. This is a number four and it's a black silver black velvet I love these brushes they're my favorites um, so let's just go ahead now the color of your leaf is entirely up to you uh, I tend to love the really red the rich red maple leaves so I'm gonna take this beautiful rust color here and mix it with the red get a very deep shade Right, so I'm gonna go ahead, and I am gonna do a variety of different colors. In fact, I'll go ahead and mix them now. Um, I'm gonna do some orange, cat orange. So I'll have that off to the side. And maybe let's do a little of this really pretty warm uh, gold color. It's like a yellow gold. And again, your set if you don't have the Artistro paint set, your set may have some uh, different colors, but please use your imagination. I know I say that a lot, but it's very true. Don't uh, don't don't feel that it has to look a certain way because the more you play with it, the more you're going to find what works best for you. So let's go ahead and I'll start with the red. And all I'm going to do is try try your very best to go around the veining that's there. And as you can see, I'm just being super careful because you can't really put light colors on top. And now I think I'm just going to switch right over to this rusty color. You use the point on your paintbrush to be able to get into these little fine lines. Now, yes, I could have draw, I could have taken my paint pens and drawn them on, but I'm trying to go for a more painted look on this one. So let's just go ahead and keep going with this theme. But if you wanted to, you could just paint the whole thing one color and then use paint pens to do the veining. But I wanted a very watercolory look on this particular one, so. That's why I am being careful. So I'll go ahead on maybe on this side and do a few places of the red in here. Okay, and I am gonna, I'm not real happy with this paintbrush, so I'm gonna switch over to my other one. I think I must, sometimes when you leave your paintbrushes in water, 
you can ruin them. And I found out the other day I did do that. And I mean, we all do it. We all make mistakes that way. So um, even people who, like me who've been painting forever and ever, the, the thing about watercolor brushes is you don't want to leave them sitting in water. So, as you can see, I've switched to an orange tone. I'm just going to turn it around like this. And, yeah, the point on this, this is even a bigger brush, but the point on it is very nice because it's, I didn't ruin it. I'm going to go ahead and dab this with red on the edge. And we just keep going around those veins. Turn it around. Okay, we're getting close to the end. Okay. So as you can see, I have some really pretty um, different shades kind of blending into each other. I'm going to go ahead and take that deep red, maybe even add some more of this burgundy color like this, and just hit it on the edges just to re... I just love the dark red leaves more than anything. But if you were going to do this with golds or browns, that's great too. Whatever you want. Have fun with it. You know, spend as much or as little time as you want on each one. Okay, so this is a good place to stop. I'm gonna just take, um, I'm gonna take some of this, let's see. I don't wanna wake this up. I'm gonna take some of this burnt umber and just kind of wanna highlight some of my veins a little bit especially the stem and just kind of come across a few places just so it doesn't look like it's all one color. Just try to wake that up a little. So you can see there's lots of colors going in and out. here. Okay, so you can kind of see that the, you know, everything looks, it looks very painty. You know, I, 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 here I'll show you a little bit better, but as you can see, it's just sort of abstract looking and I love that look for what we're going to be making. So let me just get this down a little bit more. All right, so we're gonna stop here and let our leaf dry and go back and finish up the whole project. So my little deer is nice and dry, and um, if it buckles, just bend it back and it'll be just right. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a few more little details on it. Try, like I said, I'm trying not to spend too much time on each one, but if I were to, if I, let's say I had a guest of uh, 10 people coming, I would do it in, you know, 10, 10 little levels where I would just go from, you know, paying all the deer and then doing all the details all in a row. And it just makes it so much easier. But when your guests find out that you hand painted all of these, oh my gosh, they're just going to absolutely appreciate that you did that. So I'm going to take a very dark, dark um, burnt umber color. And the first thing I want to do is its nose. It's just a, a little detail like that. Nothing, 
nothing big. And then of course I want to do the eyes. That eye wouldn't even be showing. So let's go ahead and I'm going to dip it in the first burnt umber color. Let me water that down a little. I don't want that really strong. And I'm going to just kind of outline the ears. Just a little bit and fill in this area in here. Just trying to give it a little bit more detail. And this leg is in the back. So I think it would be best if we darken it up a little just to kind of make it look like it's in the back. And the same thing with this one. So we'll darken that up a little a bit more just so the one in the front just stands out a little bit more. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and use this color just to outline the tail. But this right here Just going to go, give it kind of a soft strokes like this just so that it looks like it's the fur. It'll dry very pretty. It'll dry uh, very soft too. So let's just go ahead and keep going with that. Very simple. No, no, no. There we go. Okay. Let's stop here with this, and I will. If you wanted to, you could take a dark, a much darker color, and then just hit it on the hoofs here, like I'm doing. And okay, so. We are going to uh, finish up all the details on the three of our place cards. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the pumpkin one. And my idea was to place it right about here so that when it's standing up on the table, there's a pumpkin here, and then you can write the name going in a circle like this or across, however you want to do it. So let's just go ahead and finish up with the details. We'll start with the card. And basically, I'm just going to take my gold metallic medium point Artistro paint marker pen. These are fantastic. Um, once you get introduced to these, you will never ever do use another company again. So what I'm trying to do is just run this gold metallic along the edge. Kind of just give it a little bit of sparkle. If you just let it run across the edge of it, you will be fine. Okay, I'll just go ahead and go all the way around. Why not? Just running it along twice just so I make sure it's nice and covered. So isn't that pretty? I'm gonna put this aside because it will stay wet for a little while, not very long though. So I'll go ahead and work on the pumpkin. And let me just bend that back. So that was what we did with paint, but we're just gonna give it a little bit more detail. So I've got my orange. Um, actually, these paint pens don't even have names that I can see on them, So, um, but this is, the fine tip, and I'm just going to go ahead and run it along the inside just to give it a little bit more detail. Okay, and I want to do the stem, so I'm just going to take a brown shade. Just 
giving it a little bit of whimsy. Okay, so now I think what I want to do is kind of making this up as I go along. Well, I think that's actually pretty cute. Let's just leave it like this for now. And um, I'm going to go ahead and glue it down so that I can show you uh, what little details I'll do afterwards. So I think the gold is dry. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of tacky glue and run it along in the middle here, just a little. You don't need a, a whole bunch. It's not really coming out very well right here. So here we go. Okay, so I'll just run that along the bottom here. Hold that down for a second. It really, tacky glue is very tacky and it usually works right away. Gluing it down. Okay, so now the reason why I wanted to have it down there so that I could do a couple of these cute little curly, um, see? Just a few little fun whimsy. You could put some, you know, designs along the bottom, but I like to keep it pretty simple because you really, you still have to have uh, the person's name up there. So we're gonna call this one done. I think you get a little bit of sparkle from the, um, the gold metallic. And of course, this is so, so fun because it's hand painted and we have this really soft hand painted background. And this just makes for a really nice Thanksgiving or even just an autumn, festival type party. So this one is done and now we'll move on to the other two. Okay, so this, um, our little flap that's right here is nice and dry and, um, and this is where we're gonna stick our leaf. But first we wanna do something along the edges just to give it a little bit more um, uh, detail. So what you can do is kind of like what I did on the pumpkin note card. You could take a ruler and do a border around it, but I'm just actually gonna do something a little bit more fun. So I think what I wanna do is do like a stitching going all the way around. Um, people who know me know that I like to sew. So I think what I'll do is just kind of pick a width going all the way around and Keep going, just so it looks like it's kind of um, almost like a little burlap fabric, which is kind of what I was trying to create. Just keep going all the way around, making it look like it's a little flap that's sewn down. And I'm gonna do the same thing going across. I'm I really try to keep these projects easy. These classes are intended for beginners and um, and maybe just to inspire you, give you new ideas. Sometimes watching lessons like this can even relax you, even if you're not an artistic person. But if you're looking for fun little, you know, projects to take your mind off of, you know, everything that's going on in the world, these are perfect for you. So uh, as you can see, I'm not worried about it being so perfect. I'm just going all the way around just to give it um, a stitch feel. My handwriting isn't the greatest, so I don't even wanna show you how, how to put someone's name. I'm gonna leave that up to your imagination or I'm gonna find somebody that has very good handwriting. And so this is where I would slip the leaf in and there's my uh, place card. I would just lay it right on top of the plate or if there's a napkin on top of the plate, I would lay it on top of that. And this is a space where you would put someone's name on the top. So this, is, this one is done and here's their little hand painted leaf that they get to take with them. So this is the second one and now we'll go ahead and finish our last one. Okay, so we're going to work on the last one. I went ahead and glued my uh, stag deer in uh, place 
because I needed to have it in place while I finish up the rest of it. So um, this time I'm going to use um, silver. I kind of decided that I wanted to um, put some silver on his antlers. So I have my um, silver metallic medium point and I'm just going to hit all of the area that I had painted gray with the silver. And that would just give it a little bit of elegance. Still wanting to keep things kind of on the earthy side. And um, this will, once it dries, it'll be really pretty. Okay, so we've got the silver antlers and I'm gonna go ahead and take the white. And I just wanna do a little bit of detail around his eyes because kind of want to wake up the eyes there and a little in the front here and maybe a little in the ears just to kind of wake up them in those areas and a little on the tail so um, you could put some on the underbelly if you wanted to. Now, I kind of wish I had made my sky a little bit darker, but it's okay, because what I want to do is actually put use my paint pen to put snow. And you can just dot it on like this. You really get it. It won't, it won't uh, affect where you're going to put the name, because it's so light. And then I'm going to go ahead and just have it keep going all the way down, just to add another element. And of course there would be snow that's falling in front of the deer as well. So we'll go ahead and do that. Just to give it kind of a really pretty snowy effect. Okay, now if you wanted to get, if you really wanted to put some more effort into it, some more um, detail. You could border it the same way we did these. this one right here where we gave it a gold border. You don't have to. I think if it were me, I'd probably just go ahead and do silver since this is more a, of a snowy, wintry look. So we'll just go ahead and go around everything. Same way that we did the other one, the pumpkin one. Just go all the way around. Again, it didn't, you don't have to do it. It didn't actually need it, but it's just a little bit more detail and it'll just keep you busy, busier a little longer. So just go ahead and run this along the bottom. And there you have it. We are all through with um, all of our place cards and there they are right here. You can put the name here, the name here, and the name here and I think these are very uh, special and fun. Um, if you are having a hard time getting these little cutouts, message me and I will do what I can to uh, work something out with you where I can uh, sell you some of the ones. I'll cut some out here and then we can work something out. But do try to, you know, just do it yourself, sketch it out. It, it, you could even take a real leaf and trace it onto your um, watercolor paper. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Um, I certainly did. It's really a lot of fun. I can't make up my mind which one I would choose for um, Thanksgiving because all of them would work. So um, check back soon and share, subscribe, and thumbs up. Um, and feel free to leave me any comments, uh, questions that you may have, concerns you may have, and I'll be happy to get back to you. So until we paint again, God bless you, and let's paint and have fun again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.